And when it comes to today's agenda, we will start out with a 40 minute presentation by Dennis, demo included in this presentation, just so you know. And in the end, we have around 20 minutes saved for a Q&A session. So please feel free to put your questions, any questions you might have in the chat during the talk, and I will save them for our last 20 minutes. Or at the end of the talk, you can also raise your hand, uh, ask uh, your question directly to Dennis, as you have the opportunity to ask him stuff directly. Uh, questions can be his talk related, but you know, you can also challenge him a little bit and ask him any specific problems you might be uh, encountering at work or something on your learning path that maybe Dennis can help you with. Because as I said, he is very, very passionate about sharing knowledge as well. So take this opportunity today to learn from him, ask him directly and challenge him a little bit. He loves that. Before we start today, Dennis, will you be presenting your demo in uh, dark or light mode? Funny story. I will never, ever, ever be presenting in light mode again. So Why? I had this, this talk a couple of months ago. It was concerning open telemetry, but also source generators. In either case, I, I got to the demo part and I pulled up the IDE and it was in white because I was instructed to be in white and people just freaked out. Like most of the questions I've got were, why are you using white mode? Why not dark mode? Are you even a developer? So I'm using dark mode today, just so everyone knows that. Okay, I have very wise choice. I mean, or you could uh, troll us a little bit and use light mode just for the little. Uh, no, okay, dark mode it is. Okay, so without further ado, uh, welcome everybody else who just joined. 40 minutes of presentation, 20 minutes at the end for your Q&A, uh, and then it's take it away. Thank you very much, Sabina. So, hi everyone. Uh, I am Dennis. Um, what can I say about myself? I'm a software engineer. Uh, I've been a software engineer for more than a decade now. I'm not counting like specific years and days, but it's been more than a decade. Um, I do some cool projects on GitHub. You can find me on my handle uh, down on the screen. I am yeah, okay, I'm certain, like mildly active on LinkedIn, so hit me up there if you if you have any questions. I also do blogging. I have my own blog, which is a bit dusty, but I promise I'll I'll, I'll pick up the pace on that as well. Uh, I'm also a public speaker. I do uh, web speaking, uh, public conferences, and so on, uh, and mo mostly or predominantly about technology. Um, I'm also a Microsoft MVP. Uh, and I have been awarded in the category of developer technologies. Um, and I'm going to be speaking to you today about well, development, of course. Um, but most importantly, I'm a .NET enthusiast. So I, I love everything about .NET, and not because I need to say that by any means, but because it's, it's really a, a language and an ecosystem that keeps involve, evolving at such a good pace, and, and it's... It has just so many nice features and, and, and uh, other stuff added like yearly. Um, apart from that, I'm also an open telemetry enthusiast. And I've been an open telemetry enthusiast for a couple of years now. I've done a couple of talks on open telemetry and open telemetry combined with source generators and what is open telemetry and how can you use open telemetry and yeah. Today's talk is also about uh, open telemetry. So we're just going to start with the very basics, like what is open telemetry? And in order for us to actually know what open telemetry is, we need to know what we're talking about, right? So we are talking about telemetry here, right? So now we're more specific. And we can say that telemetry is the process of collecting and an analyzing data from re remote sources, right? And the idea behind this is to gain some insights into the system, how it performs, what it does, how it functions, does it function correctly, and so on, right? So it's, it's a, a word that comes from, you know, tele and metric, meaning that, you know, remote measurements, right? Um, and when we're speaking of telemetry in, in uh, software, we're usually talking about observability, right? So let's take it from the top. Observability in, in software systems, at least, is the ability to understand the internal state of a system only by examining its outputs, right? So 
in the context of software, this means that we're being able to understand the internal state of a system by examining its telemetry data. And its telemetry data usually consists of signals. These signals are usually logs, traces, and metrics, right? So if we turn that, that a bit around, right? A system is considered observable if the current state can be estimated by only using the information from its outputs, right? And the question pops up here, like, why do we need that, right? Uh, why, why is it so important that we consider observability in all of our software systems, right? And this question keeps popping up more and more uh, in, in the recent years. And there are, of course, reasons for that, right? So why do we need observability? We make changes to the code base every day, right? Our uh, process cycles of deploying software and putting it in production increases over time, right? Usually this was like a six month uh, uh, development cycle, two months testing and release, right? We had everything tested, everything works. Right now we have sprints that last two, last two or three weeks. We need to put it in production right away and we don't have a clue if it's working as intended, right? So if we can observe what our, our system does, how it behaves, what are the consequences of the changes that we just deployed, well, we as developers feel better about it. Our managers, owners, whoever feels better about knowing that their system is performing as expected, right? Um, so other things we need to know about, uh, uh, or other things that we use observability for is also, you know, do we know is this code being used anywhere or can we just get rid of it, right? Is anyone using that feature? Uh, how are our external dependencies behaving? Like we're, we have an integration with a bank. What if the bank suddenly starts producing timeouts for some reason, right? If we don't have the ability to observe this behavior, we cannot act on it, right? So this means that we can now literally ship more often because we are more ready to face the consequences of that, right? Our software, of course, over time, it, 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 it has more complexity, right? So we know we are more certain about our complex software systems because we know how they be behave, right? And this also means that when we know all of these things, we know that we have less downtime, right? We know that we can act upon these things fast by using alerts, uh, by, by examining telemetry, whatever. And we know that we can fix these things before customers, clients complain, right? Um, and of course, you know, because we want observability because us as developers don't want to be held responsible too much, right? We don't want to break things. You know, the, this move fast and break th things, that's cool, but we really don't want to break things in production, right? So that's just another sort of a net that keeps you from, uh, from doing stupid things. Let's call it like that. Okay, uh, that's the basics. Uh, one more really cool thing that I'm ashamed to say I just discovered like a couple of months ago. So if you you ever heard, uh, seen this O11Y, OLLI, right? It's basically a shorthand for observability, right? That just goes to show how lazy us, us developers are, right? So basically it's a, it's a numeronym. You take the first letter, you take the last letter, and then you count the letters in between. So O, 11, Y, Oli, right? So if we take observability and put it between Kubernetes, K8S, and let's say internationalization, I, 18N, we're sort of middle lazy, right in the middle, right? So that's just a cool fact. Um, okay, let's move on. So. When we are talking about observability, as I mentioned, we usually talk about three basic signals, three basic types of telemetry that is being exported. Now, we all know logs. These are basically, they come, they have the biggest history. They, they, they've mo they're most used in, in all of the soft software systems. And a log is basically a timestamped text record, right? You have a timestamp when, when the record was created, you have a message or a message template, and then you usually have some optional metadata attributes or, or uh, any sort of baggage that actually uh, adds some context to the log, right? 
The next thing is traces. Now, if you take a log and you sit and you specify in a log message, you specify this log, this operation that I'm logging started at this particular time timestamp. It ended in that particular timestamp. And then you also add relation to other log entries, like how they, uh, they depend on each other. Then you basically have traces, tracing, right? So a trace is a collection of span, right? While a trace doesn't actually exist in any, in any logical sen sense, a trace is basically just a collection of spans. And a span is just a, a measurement or an event that has a start time and end time. Again, some optional attributes, some ev optional events, a status. And it basically provides you with the insight of a particular operation, right? And the scope of this operation can be a bit different. Uh, we can talk about this later. Um, but it also gives you something else. It gives you causality, right? When you have a single span and you connect it to another span and then another span and another span, you get this chain of operations that occur, occurred with, let's say, a request to your, uh, to your system. That means that you now have the, in, the insight to, to know exactly what your code was doing or what, the, what code paths did your request trigger, what was happening inside, what were the responses, uh, what were the results of these, of these uh, operations that occurred. And you can sort of view this as a, as a, as a waterfall, right? And the third type of signal uh, that, that is also very common is a metric. Right in in .NET and all also every other language out there, we have some sort of some way of measuring uh, some numerical values. Let's say how many requests your application receives, or how much uh, time does a particular web request take, or how many cache hits or misses were there in the application. Right? These are all measurements, and basically at the moment that this me measurement is captured, it, this is called a metric event, right? So, and that doesn't only consist of the measurement, like uh, let's say uh, request uh, time elapsed 10 milliseconds, right? It also consists of um, you know the time at which was captured and the associated metadata, right? And that can also be then tracked and, and reasoned about in, in let's say, uh, time series databases like uh, Prometheus, for example. And we can talk about this a bit later. So that's a primer on what observability is. Now we can actually talk about open telemetry. So open telemetry is a – it's also known as OTEL, and it's basically in vendor neutral observability framework for instrumenting generating and exporting telemetry data such as the things we talked about traces metrics and logs right so at its core open te open telemetry is a protocol right it defines what types of signals exist how they're constructed what are their attributes how they how they actually appear to the outside world it defines a wire format, right? So we want to capture a log and push it to some other system. We do this over a wire, right? It, of course, defines all the signals, like we said, um, uh, logs, traces, uh, spans, events, uh, metrics, and so on. And it also comes back, uh, so the entire open telemetry ecosystem com comes back with a lot of SDKs. Now, we're talking about .NET specifically today, today, but that is not specific to .NET. There, there are SDKs that allow you to instrument your applications in various popular and also non, not so popular languages, and they're openly available on their websites, right? So you can just check it out, what, what you can do with OpenTelemetry on opentelemetry.io. Now, the history of OpenTelemetry is a bit confusing, maybe. So it's sort of, it's, it's a cloud native computing foundation project, right, C, uh, CNCF. You may have, may have heard of CNCF because it also houses Kubernetes, right? And open telemetry is right in its second place, right? It's, it's the second most popular 
CNCF project uh, out there. And it actually came about uh, from two different projects that were going on a couple of years ago. One is open census and the other one is open tracing, right? So someone figured out, hey, we're sort of doing the same things. Let's maybe mix and match and then we can create a standard that everyone can use. And that brings us into opentelemetry.net. Of course, it exists, but I don't want to spend too much time uh, discussing things. Maybe let's just go into the demo and we can start from the very beginning and we can, we can just have a look at uh, what this gives us in .NET, right? So uh, the demo is, is on my GitHub profile. I will also have a link at the end of the, the session, so don't need to copy it now. Um, but let me just switch over to my nice and dark IDE here. And let's start with the basics. So we have a very simple web application. It's a, actually a web API that has this weather forecast endpoint. Now you might have seen this weather forecast endpoint because this is basically what, what is created every time you create a new web project. Right? You have sort of a weather forecast and then you have some in-memory data or some dummy data that gives you, I don't know, seven days of, of, of forecasts uh, for the future. Now, I've added a bit uh, of complexity here, and that is that instead of using this dummy data, I'm actually calling uh, a service uh, called Open Meteo API Service, and I'm getting the actual weather forecast uh, data for, who can guess? It's Ljubljana, it should be Ljubljana, right? So um, also what I'm doing here is I'm actually caching some data because it makes sense to cache this data. Now the time spans here are really, really low and that's just for the demo purposes. So if we start this, uh, just to show you what this does is, Right after I start, the, I start the application, you can actually see the logs that are being generated. Now, these logs aren't a part of OpenTelemetry, and we can talk about it uh, a bit later. But if I issue uh, a request to the API, I get back the response. It's an array for dates, temperature, and Celsius, and the summary, right? So it's hot. It's hot uh, today. It's going to be hot tomorrow and the day after that. And then it's going to be balmy and then hot and so on and so on, right? So this is basically how the, the API works, and that's a really good starting point to, uh, to start messing with OpenTelemetry. Now, if you go to the program, we can see here that, uh, you know, there's just basic stuff here. There's an HTTP client for open media. There's a weather servers that we're calling. There's memory cache, and that's pretty much it. Now, let's get started, and let's add some OpenTelemetry. Right. So the first thing we do is we say uh, builder dot. Whoops, sorry. Builder dot services dot add open telemetry. All right. And it's just that simple. No, I'm joking. So the next thing we do is we need to define a resource. Right. So uh, configure our resource. Now, what is a resource? A resource is basically our application. Right. So. Uh, uh, let's build the resource and say builder dot um, add the service, right? So this is where we say our service is a sample web application and it has a, I don't know, a version, let's say service version of 1.0.0, okay? Then we can also specify that, that we want to include deep telemetry SDK, and that's useful uh, to, to know where the telemetry is actually be, being generated, right? So right now, we added open telemetry. We configured our application, so its name is a sample web application. It's a version 1.00, and we also included, you know, open telemetry data, right? Um, the next thing that we need to do is configure logs, right? So let's say with logging, right? Again, we get a builder. We say builder dot, um, let's say here, uh, add a console exporter. 
And that's pretty much it, right? One thing I forgot, and I just remembered, and I'm really, really sorry about that, is if we go to this project real quick, you can see that I have some NuGet packages installed, right? So the, the basic ones are is just open telemetry. This gives you the ability to actually access the SDKs. Then we have a couple of exporters that we're going to use, right? So we, we can export to console or to open telemetry, telemetry protocol. We can integrate our open telemetry with our hosting uh, services, right? So we have a, a web host and we want to integrate it in that. And then we're going to do some instrumentation. So just a couple of basic NuGet packages, right? Now we're back to logging, right? So we noticed earlier that we are already doing logging, right? Because the builder, the default application builder actually comes with a built-in console logger, right? So what we can do is we can say builder.logging.clear providers just so we know that we are doing open telemetry and not anything else. And if we start this up right now, Now that's a bit different, right? So we're still getting logs, right? We know when the log was created. We know the category. So the Microsoft hosting lifetime created an informational log with the body of now listening on some address and then the attribute of the address, right? And that's way more verbose. Of course, we can shorten this a bit, but it just gives you the idea of what uh, attributes are a part of a log record. Right? So we have this body, which is basically a message template. We have loads and loads of attributes. And then if you remember, we added this telemetry SDK earlier. We also know what kind of a library, what kind of an SDK actually created this log record. And why is this important? Because I might have mentioned that open telemetry is quite young, you know, as far as uh, a software uh, uh, ecosystem can be young and that means that there were recently a lot of changes right and and stuff is also evolving at this very moment right and just recently all of these signals became stable because earlier they were in beta stage or there were some misconceptions on how we should represent attributes and what should be the naming of that and this right so it keeps evolving right so if you know which sdk version actually created the telemetry you can reason about what the, the actual telemetry is going to look like. And that's pretty much it, right? So we added logging. Uh, now we said that there are two other types of um, types of signals that are available. So let, let's, let's add tracing. We add tracing and again we get a builder and we say uh, builder dot add console exporter, right? And that's going to give us basically nothing because we don't have any traces in our application, right? But who does, does have traces is Kestrel and ASP.NET Core. And most of the applications that, uh, or rather the libraries, underlying libraries that we're using, right? So what we can do is we can say, uh, we can instrument uh, ASP.NET Core. And I just showed you earlier that we're actually using an HTTP client. So we can do that as well. So we can instrument um, instrument our HTTP client, right? And this, this is going to give us traces for, uh, for ASP.NET Core, like everything that goes on in ASP.NET Core and everything that goes on with our HTTP clients. And it's going to be exported to the console, right? And just real quick, so we have the entire picture, we can also do uh, metrics, right? So we can add metrics again with a builder, and then we can say builder.add console exporter, and then um, we have HTTP client instrumentation, and we have ASP SP.NET Core instrumentation. And in this case, we also have something else that doesn't kind of make sense for, for tracing, and that is runtime instrumentation. Right. So this gives us the ability for our application to actually export uh, types of signals that are related to the runtime of the application, uh, such as um, garbage collection, memory, uh, memory allocations and so on. Right. And right now we just added open telemetry to our application. Right. So if I start this, you can see that it's going to just work 
out of the box, right? So we have some log records. And now if we, uh, we issue another request here and go back to our application, we can see that we have now some measurements and um, we have some traces, right? So we have this trace ID and then we have tags and so on, right? So, so now our application is, uh, is doing a lot more of output. The issue here is that this doesn't really make sense for us to view in our console application. So let's figure out what we can do about this. Uh, I'm going to quickly switch over to the slides and just do a really, really fast recap. So we created our weather API. We added some NuGet packages. We added some uh, instrumentation for ASP.NET Core HTTP runtime, right? What we didn't do yet is add instrumentation to our, for our specific web application, and we're going to do this in just a moment, right? And then we said we want to export this to the console. And that's all good for, for, for development purposes, for something very simple. At least you have an oversight of what kind of signal application your application provides. But we can actually do better, right? So let's say we replace uh, our console outputs to something else. And now the question becomes, what else, right? So we know that open telemetry sort of gives you everything out of the box. And one of these things is the open telemetry protocol, right? And that gives you the ability to export all of this telemetry that we just saw in the console, export out of our application using that said uh, open telemetry protocol. But where do you actually export this data? Again, open telemetry comes with a solution. It's actually a tool that is used to collect this open telemetry, process it, and well, do something else with it, right? It's called an open telemetry collector. And it's basically a service, uh, an application that runs somewhere in the background. It exposes an endpoint for, for example, for open telemetry protocol or for Prometheus and so on, right? And it allows your application to send all of this telemetry to this collector. Now, what this collector does is it batches the data, right? So it, it, it does some pre-processing. It uh, unifies some attributes. It post-processes data, and we can talk about this, uh, what this means later. It also, it also filters the data, and then it exports the data to wherever you want. Now, what is that wherever, right? Because at this very point, open telemetry ends. Right, so the application, the instrumentation, the collector, the the wire protocol, that is all part of Open Telemetry. What is not a part of Open Telemetry is the actual telemetry backend that is capable of receiving and displaying and reasoning about this telemetry. Right, but Open Telemetry supports a plethora of these. Right, so just to give you an idea. Uh, and there's loads and loads more, right? So it's Prometheus, Honeycomb, Datadog, Splunk, New Relic. Uh, there is uh, all sorts of other open source or paid tools that you can use to export this telemetry, right? And not only that, you can actually export telemetry from this collector, which sort of acts as a standalone service that is adjacent to your application, or most of these uh, uh, backends actually support uh, or platforms actually support the open telemetry pro protocol itself. So you can just push the data directly from a replication to them, right? And that works and that's the end of it, right? But we, we really need to talk about the developer experience here. So let me show you something just to, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Right. So what I've created here is just a sample Docker compose file, right? You have this open telemetry collector, right? It, it has some configuration. It receives data on the default open telemetry endpoint, right? There, it, it has some health checks and so on and so on. 
And then just for an example, I've added Jaeger, right? And Jaeger is an open an open source uh, tracing uh, uh, backend. Basically, it's capable of visualizing all of your tracing data, so you can reason about it a bit a bit better, right? Now, when it comes to the configuration of our open telemetry collector, it's it starts off really simple, and it can get very, very complex down, down the line, right? But the basic components are this, right? So the receivers, what, what endpoint, where is our open telemetry collector receiving uh, the data, right? So we say we want to receive over open telemetry protocol, and we want to do it over gRPC. Great, optimal. Now, what we want to do next is we want to process the data, right? And it doesn't make sense to do individual calls for for uh, telemetry um, to to whatever backend system you're sending. So we want to batch the data, right? We're being optimal here. We're preserving uh, a network band bandwidth and so on, right? So basically, we receive telemetry. We wait a bit until the telemetry collects, and then we send it in batches. And where do we send it? Well, we can send it to multiple different backends, like I, like I already mentioned. But here's just an example. Jaeger supports, again, open telemetry protocol. So we can just send it to Jaeger via open telemetry protocol. And because we're being really stupid right now, we can do it in an insecure, insecure way, because we really, really don't care about the data right now. Otherwise, you should care about the data. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? Um, and now you can add logging here. Uh, you can add Prometheus, and then you can add Grafana on top, and you can maybe add log low key uh, with Grafana for log aggregation and, and 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 so on, right? And then this Docker Docker Compose file starts getting really, really, really intense and long, and and you sort of get lost in 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 doing all of this and you're not focused anymore on development you're focused on on actually maintaining your local environment for the development purposes right so now we have a problem right because open telemetry is really cool but then again it's if i need to do all of these things to 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 get any sort of development experience and to get any sort of uh you know benefits from actually using and switching to open telemetry then i need to have something more and well there's a solution i mean there's always a solution right um there's one interesting solution here and, and that is a dot net aspire i'm hoping some of you have heard what dot net aspire is it's it's a really cool new um stack that came out basically less than a year ago it's been generally generally available for a couple of months, and it's basically uh, an opinionated cloud-ready stack for building observable, production-ready, distributed applications. Let's break this down a bit. So, if you if you are working with cloud-native applications, you usually don't have a single service, right? You usually don't contain all of your data and everything within one particular service. You're, you, you're working with multiple modules, multiple microservices. You're working with caching, databases, um, Azure, AWS, whatever, right? .NET Aspire basically helps you create and reason about this entire stack. But it also comes with a really nice perk, right? And this perk was sort of accidentally what we needed to, to make this a bit cleaner, right? So we just need the dashboard. The dashboard is really cool. When I was talking about Jaeger and Prometheus and, and Loki and Grafana and everything like that, well, for development purposes, the .NET Aspire dashboard is basically what you need. So just to show you how really easy and cool it is to set up, let's go, let's open our, our uh, console and let's, start a sorry not this one right we are going to start a docker container and this docker container is from microsoft so it's the aspire dashboard the thing that we're after right and after we started we have an aspire dashboard running here and now let's have a look at what this actually entails so if we navigate to localhost 18888 and we just ignore this warning because we're doing our unsecured things today. We see that we can now see some structured logs. 
we can see some traces, we can see some metrics and so on, right? But nothing is actually here. So let's quickly fix up our application, right? Let's add, what did I just do? Oh, sorry. You still see my screen, right? Yeah. I just switched. Uh, yeah, all good with you. Perfect. So let's ignore the, the console exporter and then add uh, the open telemetry exporter, right? And we can do this for we can do this for all of three all three signals, right? And like we mentioned earlier, this is basically going to export the data out of your application using the open telemetry protocol and SDKs and everything that is available uh, by just using open telemetry. Now, where exactly are we exporting? So .NET Aspire, when you set it up, when you start it in Docker, it actually exposes port 4317, right? And 4317 is a default port that is registered for use with open telemetry. So we don't need to do anything here. This is just going to work. But you know, just if you want to export somewhere else, somewhere else, you can say uh, options dot endpoint, and then you can specify the endpoint. You can specify the processor type, so it's either HTTP or gRPC. You can do some batching options. You can specify the protocols. You can add extra headers if you want, and so on. Um, and that's all available for you. But for us to get started, we don't need any of this, right? We just want to export to open telemetry and go. And I'm really running out of time, so I'm going to be very quick about this here. Uh, we started the application, and if we go over to our solution, and we do a couple of requests here. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. OK, well, enough. Uh, and let's go and find some logs. Now you can see that we have these logs that were earlier uh, in, in the console. You know we have them here, right? So we were listening at some address, blah, blah, blah. And we're, we're doing some uh, uh, custom logging as well, right? We're using the iLogger that is standard. Uh, you can use it with open, open telemetry without an issue. And if you have a look at the, the, the details of this entry, it basically gives you, you know, all the log the log related things like uh, the, the message template, uh, the attributes, and so on. It also gives you some context, like wh where this log occurred, what was the trace ID, the span ID. It also gives you the resource, like this is this was created in the sample web application, and so on, and so on, and so on. Right? We also have traces, right? So we have, uh, if we view this trace, we can see here that we uh, created a GET request for the weather forecast endpoint. Then at some point, we also created a, uh, a, a, an HTTP client request for a particular URL, right? And both of these spans are actually a part of our instrumentation efforts, right? So basically, add ASP.NET Core instrumentation and add HTTP client instrumentation. And that's basically it. This is all we needed to do to actually get this view and all of this data that is under it, right? And now the third thing, just to show it here, we need to select our sample web application, and then we can do we we have the ability to uh, to aggregate and view and reason about all of the metrics that are coming in from ASP.NET Core and Open Telemetry and the runtime and HTTP client and so on, right? And that is all available to you just by a single Docker uh, run command, right? So don't need to worry about any uh, setup for the local environment. And that's pretty much it. So just, just to recap, recap real quick, we added open telemetry. We started uh, .NET Aspire, and we have everything locally, right? Of course, you can't use this uh, in production, or you shouldn't use this in production. But it's, it gives you a really, really nice idea of what's going on during your development, for example. Now let me quickly show you what we can do if we want to actually do some custom uh, uh, telemetry, right? And if we focus on, on tracing here a bit, I've created a service that is called instrumentation. And in this instrumentation, I've created an activity source. Now, some of you might recognize activity source because it's part of the system diagnostics namespace, 
right? And just so you have a reference of what an activity is uh, in regards to open telemetry terminology, an activity is a tracer, right? If someone uses open telemetry already, this is a tracer. This, this gives you the ability to create traces, right? So what we do here is we say, okay, please create a new activity source. Uh, you know, name it somehow. We're just going to name it after our en entry assembly. So sample web application, and we're going to version it some other way, right? And we unfortunately are not going to focus on metrics today because we're running a bit out, out of time, but we now have an activity source. Now, if we go back to our program, we want to use this activity source, right? So what we can do first is we can say uh, builder dot and Singleton, right, because this should be a singleton and we can add this instrumentation. So the activity source is something that should usually be one per application and, and it should usually have a lifetime of the application. Now, I'm not really for putting everything in the DI container, but just for the sake of, of, of the demo, let's create a singleton of this instrumentation and then we can inject it into our web request, right? So we can say, Please give me instrumentation. Um, and then we can do something really cool. We can say using var activity equals instrumentation activity source dot start activity. That gives us basically unlimited uh, ways that we can instrument our application and actually provide the data or the telemetry that is important to us. So what does this mean? Activity dot set tag. And then we can do a tag like, um, or let's add a tag. Uh, and we can add a tag, uh, I don't know, who bar, right? We can then say activity dot add event, right? So events are basically, let's call them mini logs. Uh, let's say weather forecast, forecast request is starting. Uh, and then we can also say uh, activity that set status, right? It succeeded, so it was okay, right? Now let's run this real quick and see what just happened. Okay, we're running, and now we are doing this, 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 a couple of requests. Someone is going to go insane. Ah. What just happened? Oh, sorry. My screen is just turned off. Am I still here? You're still here. Yeah, perfect. You can still see your screen. Maybe uh, it was ah. counting the time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I am going to maybe take yeah, one take, more minute. Take it at the end, yeah. or are you, have you yeah. finished, or do you need to continue it just to explain it better? Maybe, maybe let's finish up here. Uh, I'm just going to share one more thing here. Okay. Uh, real quick, uh, or just to um, to finalize this. So basically, uh, you know, you have the ability to add existing instrumentation, and that is uh, instrumentation is also a part of a lot of libraries that are in the ecosystem. But you also have the ability to uh, to create your own instrumentation, your own traces, and 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 basically consume whatever works for you and what you need, right? And then you also have the ability to be very selective of what makes sense for you, right? Um, and because we are over time right now, I'm really happy to talk about this in another channel in another way. But for now, uh, so I don't get strangled later. Let's just finish up here um, with just a second of more, more time. So um, one thing that I wanted to talk about here is uh, what, what's, what's 
in store for the future of op open telemetry, right? And there are a couple of things that are really interesting, really important that are coming up. They're not done yet, and we don't know when we'll get them. But one is client instrumentation, right? So everything that we are talking about now is server instrumentation. We instrument our server applications, things that are running in the cloud. What about clients, right? So what is being discussed right now is uh, RAM, real user monitoring, which would allow you to actually uh, you know, put instrumentation on the clients. And that's really beneficial and really good, and I really hope uh, we get uh, this as soon as possible. The second thing is distributed profiling, right? So we have all of these traces, but we don't have any profile data, right? So that would be a really useful thing to have to actually profile your live running applications. And the, and the third thing is because, you know, this is getting really, really big, like the entire ecosystem of open telemetry. And what is currently being discussed is sort of an open telemetry called control plane, just a way for you to, um, to see and reason about what components of open telemetry are actually being used by your stacks and, and, and what is useful for you and what is maybe not useful and so on, right? And that was just a quick, uh, quick outro of the road ahead. And now that is pretty much it. So I wanted to say thank you. The template only provided two thank yous. So I added a third one. You also have a, a, a QR code which you can scan that will take you to you to my GitHub where this sample is actually posted. And I'm sorry, Sabrina, I'll, I'll give it over to you. No, 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 you're good, you're good. No bodily harm will happen, no worries. It's important that you took the demo to the end as much as it was possible, but I loved it how you went all, you, you did a speed run in the end. It was just like, okay, we're running out of time. 1.5 times as fast as that was super interesting to see and to watch. I was just laughing in the background. It was amazing. Um, but we did, we did get, uh, we do have some time now to answer the questions. So whatever comes to mind, type it in the channel. Uh, also, you can raise your hand to ask Denise directly. And we did get one from Teton Ljubljana. As you know, we're streaming your talk in uh, our office. Um, and the question that came on there was, can you explain the process of migrating from existing logging or monitoring solutions to open telemetry? Yeah. What might go wrong? OK, OK, that's an interesting question. Thank you. Um, so what might go wrong? Well, basically, I would say things that usually go wrong when you're migrating something, right? But just to give you an idea of, uh, because we can look at this from two different perspectives. We can look at this from the coding code perspective, like what, what you need to do in your code. And then we can look at this in, uh, in the perspective of your telemetry bank backend, right? Because usually when you are migrating telemetry, this means that you already have some existing telemetry somewhere, right? And it doesn't make sense to just discard it. You sort of need to continue using this or, or somehow adapt to the new way, right? And what might go wrong here is that open telemetry uh, is, well, it, it is an open protocol, but it's still a different protocol that many backend, uh, uh, backends use uh, in their pro proprietary ways, right? So what, what I'm talking about here is, uh, you noticed uh, when I was uh, doing the demos for the console that, that there were a lot of these attributes and tags, right? And open telemetry is very strict and very, um, very thorough on the semantic conventions, right? So what means what, like service.name represents your service name and so on and so on, right? That's not always the same for every tele telemetry backend, right? So when you switch from another, uh, uh, let's say another um, telemetry uh, SDK to open telemetry, you might get uh, some things a bit different in your telemetry backend. Right. So then you need to figure out how you can unify this or how you can sort of uh, modify existing telemetry or modify the new one to, to work as ex in existing way and so on. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's a, that's that a good right. answer. If you have any well, other questions, Triton37 Ljubljana, just post it below. Uh, and Blake also posed a question and he says, what sort of impact would adding open telemetry have on application performance? Uh, that's a really that's a really good question, and um, first first we need to ask ourselves: Is is adding open telemetry actually going to add um, some sort of an impact into into application performance? Right, and the answer is yes, of course it is. Right, 
but the context of this answer is very, very, very important. So let's say you're starting from the ground up. You don't have any logging, you don't have any tracing, you have nothing, and you add open telemetry. Suddenly your application is going to need to do more work, right? It's going to need to output some data, it's going to need to store some data in, in, in heap, in memory somewhere, right? So there is an overhead. I would say that the overhead of doing open telemetry is so minimal that if you are worried about actually doing logging and tracing and so on in .NET because of performance aspects, probably your .NET is not the right thing for you, right? So just, just to give you a couple of numbers, and I'm pulling these out of my head, right? But let's say that, that uh, a single request to, to the service takes I don't know, or a single operation that takes 15 nanoseconds, adding acti an activity uh, to that would take maybe 30, 30 nanoseconds, right? The thing is here, we're talking about nanoseconds, right? Um, so it's very important to figure out, you know, there's a fine line between performance and the gains you get by making your application observable, right? And of course, if you're in a really high performance scenario where, where you need to uh, look after every byte or, or, or every allocation, then of course you can optimize this, right? Because op open telemetry does offer constructs to actually optimize this. For example, if no one's listening to acti an activity, you don't need to create an activity, right? You don't need to create a span, you don't need to export it because no one will care for it, right? So there are optimizations that you can do if you are worried about performance. The other thing is exporting data, right? So we just figured out now that when you're exporting data, you do some processing, uh, batching, and so on and so on, right? And then you can export it to, let's say, via open telemetry pro protocol to Jaeger, right? If you're doing this, your application will need to do a bit more work on the application side, right? If you're, if you're let's say, you're redacting data from, from attributes and so on, right? you need to do this in your application. And this is the CPU processing time that is going to be taken to do this, right? However, if you're using an open telemetry collector, you can actually offset all of this post-processing to an external application and basically just uh, push the, the telemetry data out of your, your application as fast as possible. And um, that's pretty much it. And you've optimized on this part as well. Just a, a quick note on the second aspect here. Usually when people start using open telemetry, they don't start from scratch. Like they start with n log, SETI log, and so on and so on, right? And all of these libraries and frameworks actually need to do sort of the same amount of processing to get the telemetry out of your application. So I would say that the, the difference in impact here would be negligible, but of course, I would also really, really strongly suggest that before you come to any conclusions, you should measure first. You should always measure first, right? Okay, I want to be really mindful to people's time here since we only have six minutes, but I do have one more question. We have been talking about data a lot today, and when working with open telemetry, how does it handle sensitive data uh, in the traces and logs? Are there any built-in mechanisms for data reduction, like you mentioned, or masking? How does that work? That's another really, really great question. But we need to make it short. We need to do it in three minutes or less. Can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. I, okay. I'm, I'm going to start the timer now. OK, so two, two ways to do it. If you're exporting directly to the backend telemetry, uh, the telemetry backend, you can do a processor. You can create a processor that is going to basically go over every log and every trace that you send. And you can search for the, the data that you want to um, uh, redact, redact it, and push the telemetry out. That's good, but that is going to be a lot of overhead to your application, right? If you're doing things the second way, using the open telemetry collector, there are already standardized processors, mechanisms in place that allow you to redact, hide, filter out data that you do not want, right? And this means that because you own your application and you, you own your open telemetry collector, the sensitive information stays within your company Everything that goes out is basically either redacted, deleted, and so on. One thing to note here, please be careful of how much data you want to redact, because if you redact too much, then the usability of, of, of your telemetry becomes sort of dubious, right? 
So you need to find this thin line of what you're doing uh, between you know redacting data and even even logging data that that sort of makes sense or doesn't make sense, right? And that's of course again you need to measure, you need to re adjust according to what what you need in your application. That was impressive. Yeah. I saw, I'm sorry I rushed you, but I was uh, I just wanted to see how you work under pressure, and I see you <laughs> handled it perfectly. Keeping in the time in mind, uh, I want to thank everyone who joined us today uh, in this uh, live event with Denis Eckert. Thank you so much, Denis. It's such a pleasure to watch you have a webinar, explain things, because you do it with such joy and passion. So I was just having a big smile during this whole webinar. So thank you so, so much for taking the time and presenting today. Thank you for having me. And it was, it really was a pleasure. <laughs> Same. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of the week and a great September ahead. Bye. Bye, everyone.